Welcome to Harry Potter and the Anxious Millennials, a show where we delve week by week into each chapter of the Harry Potter series. Hello, Ari. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> no reaction. This week we read chapter 20 called The First Test. No, you did not even. There was like not even a blink. You were just like. <laughs> 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 you guys think this is a bit but this is just how adam is if we're not recording <laughs> if we're not recording yeah uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> ari this week we read chapter 20 called the first task we did what happens in this chapter the first task uh, Harry preps Great. for the first task, and we do indeed experience the first task from, or in its entirety. I was going to say from beginning to end, but in its entirety. Right. And sure. we mm-hmm. even, well, no, actually, I'll leave that. We we get a little a little sneak peek into what's happening after the first task, which I totally forgot. Did you remember that? We even get a sneak peek as to what's happening in sh- in in the second task. Is that what you mean? Or yeah, do you mean like the what? Yule ball? Like they like right away are like, and this is what you're gonna do next with the oh, with the no, egg. I was skimming again. I was Bitch, skimming. you can't. You cannot skim. You're not allowed to skim anymore. <laughs> Adam is not allowed to skim anymore. Listeners. Oh, oh, oh! The hinges. The hinges. Yes. 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 Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I misunderstood what you were saying. <laughs> I almost when yes, we... when he gathers them back in to be like, okay, the yeah, eggs. Okay, it's gotcha. like yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. For some reason, I totally thought. Sorry, this was actually a long chapter. <laughs> uh, I thought for some reason the movie took over my memory. The movie is apparently taking over my memory of a lot of this book because mm-hmm. I was like, oh no, they find he finds out in the common room that the I don't know. I was like. So that I was like, oh, when they were like, you need to come back in to the tent or whatever. I was like, oh, why? Oh. <laughs> What's gonna? Yeah, I was like, what's happening? <laughs> what's about to happen? Does this happen in this book? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I mean, I didn't even know with this chapter. I couldn't remember. I was like, does it lead up to him about to go to start the first task? Is it one of those again? You know, now I'm just like, I've been burned before. So. Right. With right. back to the I borough. just knew I knew that it was the whole thing because the the next chapter is called the House Self Liberation Front. So oh I was right, like, yeah. Well, this has I to haven't be the whole right. I haven't been looking at what the like following chapters are. Um. Uh, so the chapter begins um, with Harry waking up and like rushing to get dressed. I'm sorry if you're putting a hat on your foot, you've got bigger problems. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> No, a hat. What are your what type of feet do you have, Harry? A hat? You got your where you keep your hats? I'm reminded of the fact that I I think that they wear those like hats that they have in like the first movie only. (laughs) The pointed hat is in his sock drawer. Yeah. Either way, those. Either way, I'm like, sir. So he rushes downstairs, and he interrupts Hermione and Ginny's lovely breakfast, which I took issue with this. I took issue with a lot of things that Harry is just expecting of Hermione in this chapter. And I was Mm -hmm. like, first off, you just mugged her off in the last book or the last chapter. Yeah. I don't like this. You know, we are very aware of how good of a friend Hermione is to you, and you seem to not be so aware yeah. Hmm. You're going to really need her really, in this chapter. <laughs> he's really dense in this chapter. He's just like we we're, we're getting he's a really little glimpse dim. of the scene the scene with Harry. him and uh Moody where he really has to like spell it out for him. I'm like this is embarrassing, sir. Oh, I can't wait to talk about that scene. <laughs> <laughs> uh <clears throat> How gagged would you have been if Hermione was like, no. So anyways, Ginny, what were you saying? (laughs) Oh, are you still here? 
do you need something? <laughs> like, I would have been gagged. That's what she should have done. <laughs> I understand that, like, I am very much like Hermione that, like, if my friend was like, I need to figure this out or I need to do this, like, I would be like, okay, yeah, let's figure it out. Like, I would go to the library. I would be like, okay, yeah, let's go out like hours trying to figure out what would work best or whatever but also Mm -hmm. the fact that like when they go I think into the library she's like kind of just on this like I mean she's it's an external or an allowed train of thought like she's just like speaking thinking aloud she's just like Mm -hmm. being like well maybe we could do this maybe we could do that maybe we could do this and he's like Hermione can you shut up and I was like I would have left. I just can't believe. I was like, are I we know. supposed to laugh at this? I don't know. I I understand these kids are 14, but I'm on, almost like, isn't doesn't that even make it worse? I will say it doesn't read like it's played for laughs. It almost is like you're she's I think she's really trying to build how stressed yes. he feels. Yeah. Which I guess I get. I don't know. I understand that, like, maybe what she's saying isn't encouraging a lot of confidence in him. But just be sure. like, Hermione, I'm trying to think. Like, or Hermione, that's not helping. I mean, maybe she pers- purpose JK purposefully has him say shut up to her because of, like, he's, like, mad. But I'm, I'm just like, this is the one person helping you. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's a, a thing for me in terms of, like. Maybe he shouldn't be a champion. <laughs> Maybe he shouldn't be doing Girl, this tournament. Maybe they should have just been like, no, this is a bad idea. You think? Maybe. Um. Anyway, so I don't know. That moment just kind of stuck with me. I, I was like, because of the way it's read in the audiobook too, he's like, Hermione, will you shut up? Like, that's how he says it. Oh, yeah. And I, I was like, like that. Mm. Uh, so anyways, they're, you know, trying to figure out what to do. And then Crumb waddles in. And casts a surly look at Hermione and Harry. Just remember that. Uh, so th- and then Hermione. That for later. No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. And then Hermione's like, "Ugh, <laughs> we gotta no. go." Yeah, she's just like, "God, he's here again." So then she's like, "Oh, well, let's leave." So then they leave together. Um, mm-hmm. and then we kind of fast forward to Monday morning when Harry's waking up and he, for the first time ever, ever considers just running away from Hogwarts. And I was like, this is very 14-year-old. Just like... This is big 14-year-old energy. Maybe I should just run away from it all. This is this is someone not getting a part in high school because they wanted it really bad. <laughs> Listeners, one of our friends actually did that. <laughs> did that. One of our when friends did say, that. Went missing. When they, say, when they say theater people are the worst type of people... <laughs> there is precedence for it. Uh, they found her in her grandmother's basement later that day. <laughs> like she yes. didn't come to school. Next door from the place that she lives because yeah, her yeah. grandmother lives next door. It's a wild story. We won't talk about it on air, but it is a wild story. Oh my God. Um, yes, this is very that. Uh, um, so he's like, maybe I should just run away from it all. But then he's like, well... I no. truly don't know why he hasn't. Why doesn't he? If there's any professor in this school that I would like confide in or talk to, it would be McGonagall. Oh, and you and you oh. know that they're McGonagall hates the idea that he's doing. Yes, it. we like, are going to talk about it. about it in this chapter because in the, yes, in that scene, it's very clear. Um, uh-huh. And I just feel like, what, couldn't you just go to her and be like, hey? Can I just not do this? Yeah. Can I not? Can you as really? my as my head of house just like sign a waiver to be like Yeah, like what are we doing? Or at least can you tell me why I have to do it? Can you can answer me that riddle? Him? Can we talk about how last year he was not allowed to go to Hogsmeade because he did not have assigned permission slip? And now they're like you can do this tournament. Ah, I have never thought about this. I have never thought about this until this moment. Oh, Khaleesi, it's okay. okay. Khaleesi's very concerned. I have never thought about that specific detail in 
until this moment. <laughs> he was not allowed to go down the street. And now they're like, oh, you're 14. You can compete in this. <laughs> Adam is Adam is thrown in the towel for the day. <laughs> 11 minutes. Well, that in. wraps up this chapter. <laughs> I'm just saying, I have never thought about it until this moment. Like, how big of a deal was that last year? No, and now true. they're like, it was the biggest deal that he couldn't go into the wizarding town to buy chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get the butter beer down the road, but you can battle a dragon. It's fine. I'm just so annoyed. Like, Ugh, I feel like that is a thought that like oh my God. when Minnie was going and talking to Poppy, like that had to have been what she was saying. hundred like, percent. Like, he wasn't allowed to go to Hogsmeade and now they're letting him compete in this. Ugh. She had to get like a, a relaxing tonic, a soothing tonic from Poppy. Cause she was just like, Oh, Poppy's yeah. also featured in this chapter too. Yes. To much, to much applause from me. Yes. From your truly. I gave her a shout out in all caps. Um, so where I'm like, where, where my notes, where am I Monday morning? Yeah. Okay. Uh, after basically deciding that he is not indeed going to run away, he's like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'll just have to figure it out. And, you know, I'm, I can't mm-hmm. run away from Hogwarts. Like Hogwarts is my home, blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> so then he real. I think they're in the, if I remember correctly, they're in the um, Great Hall, and he sees Cedric, or maybe in the no, corner. they're on. Or oh, are they just. I out know and he about? does. He does it. He does it. Uh, I know where it. Ha- the scene takes place. Yeah. In in outside the charms right. in the charms corridor, but I don't right. know. I don't remember where he first okay. spotted him. At some point, like passing between classes or whatever's or heading to class. It's like Harry. on the way to class. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Because because <laughs> it's because Hermione's like, but Harry, the bell's about to ring. Which anytime they say this, I'm always like, the bitty bell. The bell's ringing. <laughs> right. It's the bitty bell. Um. <clears throat> so Harry has the thought. He's like, oh shit, Cedric is definitely the only champion that doesn't know about the dragons because he's sure that Crumb and Fleur have been told and spoiler, they have. So he's like, um, okay, I'm going to go all like Hermione. I'm going to go. I have something to do. And Hermione's like, you're going to be late. And he's like, whatever, it's fine. I'll catch up to you. I'll catch you up. Which I was like, I haven't really heard that expression before. I'll catch you up. Um, and then he like casts the Defendo spell on Cedric's bag. Mm Mm-hmm. Which the child knows bag open. Defindo, but doesn't know Accio. I'm just saying. Isn't Accio yeah. more useful? Right. Why would you need to new- use a tearing spell? Is this a, this might be a question for Professor Flitwick. <laughs> what is yeah, your... What's your curriculum? <laughs> We're right outside the charms. <laughs> the charms classroom need, anyway. How, yeah. How are we learning, again, how are we <laughs> learning... I said this already in this in this book, but how are we learning levitation before we learn summoning? Shouldn't that right. be like the opposite side of the coin? I know. I don't know. I have some questions. And also, did you laugh at the fact that Harry just like ruined Cedric's bag? And then like as he walks up to him, Cedric's like, oh, my new bag, too. And Harry's just like, it's dragons. <laughs> yes. It's dragons. It's dragons. <laughs> Literally, just the, like, the challenge the- is dragons. It's dragons. We're gonna have to fight the four dragons. We have to each fight a dragon. It's dragons. <laughs> oh, uh, so my my new bag. It just got ruined. Dan- Harry's not like, oh, too bad. <laughs> like, just nothing. The new yeah. task is dragons. <laughs> I would have been I funnier if he was like, of- I did it. It's dragons. <laughs> it I, I ripped your bag. It it's dragons. Me. I had to find a way to talk to you. It's dragons. <laughs> it's I dragons. guess that's true. Like, what would he say? Oh, just say like, oh, that's too bad. Hey. The task is dragons. I don't know. Maybe he was like, well, I just ruined his bag. So let me not like. Yeah, I mean, no. what I'm about. <laughs> it's dragons. <laughs> I see that. It's uh, dragons. So at first, Cedric's like. He sees Harry sees like the panic that he's been feeling manifest on Cedric's face. And then he's like. Are you sure? Like, how do you know? How do we're not supposed to know? Blah, blah, blah. And then like he and then he's like. Well, why are you telling me? 
Mm -hmm. And Harry's like, to to quote Harry exactly, it's just fair, isn't it? We all know now. We're all on even footing. And I was like, oh, this is why we love Harry. Yeah, I just was like. why he's a Gryffindor. Yeah, I was like, because he's right. Like, that's kind of how I would feel in this situation. Like, I would just be like, well, it should just be fair. So I was like, yeah, Harry. (laughs) Especially with, like, everything he's been going through. Like, I don't know. Maybe a more selfish person would have been like, well, everyone is treating Cedric like he's the champion anyway, so I'm not going to tell him because, you know, like right someone else would have kind of thought in that type of way so to give themselves a leg up so harry you're you're a good guy yeah that's right it's all fair now you're right uh so then uh clunk clunk here comes moody (laughs) like what here's moody here's moody do you think that like because okay have we talked about the fact that moody has a wooden leg i would like to open this conversation up Madam Pomfrey can regrow bones, y'all. And Moody's out here walking around with a peg leg. Yeah, what he's <laughs> what happened? Like he's Mr. Krabs. <laughs> it's really <laughs> wild. Yeah, I just, and Mr. Krabs was voiced by Michael Gambon. Did you I'm not serious? know that? <gasps> Did you not know that? Yeah, not my not my Siri turning on because she thought she heard me say serious. <laughs> not Siri. this. Wait, I have to look this up. Mister Krabs. Whoa! Yeah, I didn't this even watch wild. SpongeBob. <laughs> Um, that's crazy. Was it him the Why? whole time or did he come in later on in the no, series? Other later you realize that the whole time it was actually Barty Crouch Jr. voiced Mr. Crouch. <laughs> that's what's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, uh so wait. Moody comes up and just uh is like come to Harry, is like, come with me now. So he takes Harry into his office. Come and, with me now. Come with me and you'll this see. Is, this is, it's a person named Clancy Brown. Detectors. The what? This says it's a person named Clancy Brown. What? On IMDb. Maybe he only did it. Who was it that told me that? Oh my gosh. If this, this I is, thought. You know what this is like? You know what this is? This is when my mom told me that um, that the black no. girl in in a, in a School of Rock becomes Mercedes Jones in Glee. This is this all over again. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, if this is made up, I'm about to freak out because someone like, I can't remember who it was that told me this, but this was a thing for years that people would say. There's a meme about it. Reblog if you didn't know they were both played by the same actor. Oh, but this is is it true? SpongeBob Square. No, yeah, Clancy Brown, Mr. Krabs. Y'all, whoever started that rumor, I believed you for years. What the hell though? Now I'm I genuinely believed that for years. So I'm like, where did that even come from? Misinformation. <clears throat> yeah. What happened to misinformation? News. Fake news. Um where alternative facts. Moody takes Harry into his office and then we get a little breakdown of all his dark detectors. So there's a sneakoscope, which Harry knows what that is. Then there's something called a secrecy sensor or sensors. I can't remember if that was one thing or more than one. There's a faux glass and there is a large trunk with seven keyholes. So Moody says that he had to deactivate. Can you the explain sequ- to me a Lohamora? <laughs> if it's a door that isn't locked with a, like if it's a, a regular bolt lock, it can unlock it. Yeah. But like any do you have other to put- lock, it doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know. What? Yeah. What is that? Why does that spell exist then? You have to. 
you would have to do, it's like setting an alarm system. You have to like enchant your door too before right. you go to you bed. Have to be a, you have to be a goblin at a, at a door in... <laughs> Stand back, please. Look, look at Khaleesi right What are you looking at? What? <laughs> You're even wearing black and white. It was extra perfect. So I don't know if there are other, like other, th- I think those are all the specific things that are mentioned. The yeah. secrecy sensor, he said, he says he had to like deactivate because the students, the sure. students are lying about everything. So, sure. mm-hmm. and then he also throws in like, maybe it's not just the students as to be yes. like, oh, it's Karkaroff, but like. Right. Which I, so at that part, I said, Listeners, if you were ever going to pretend to be someone, just pick a fucking weirdo. Because anything you would do, you everyone say, would just be like, uh-huh. Yeah. Like, there's just, sure. that's, he can get away with any, that's why he's like, I'll be moody. Because I yeah, can just get away with. don't normal. Yeah, don't be Minerva McGonagall. My God. <laughs> any, any misstep and everyone would be like, yeah, who is this bitch? That's not really Minerva. Minerva is consistent. Minerva. <laughs> uh, so yeah, th- I was like, it's just this is too easy. He can just do whatever he wants. That's weird, and it just makes sense because Moody's just a weirdo. So then Moody's like, "Well, I'm not going to tell you. I don't show favoritism." But then proceeds to tell you. <laughs> like, you're fact literally that- like hotter, hotter. Oh, colder, colder. Oh, warmer, warmer. Like, I just, like you're basically giving him the answer. I know that like Fleur and Crumb had a leg up because you sure, know that they, they just talked yeah. about it with their headmasters. Yeah. And Harry hasn't had that privilege of being able to be like, Dumbledore, I know it's dragons. How are we, how, what are we doing here? And yeah. obviously it's not like Dumbledore's going to be like, well, I'll tell you, Harry, but I won't tell Cedric like right so that's why it's good that Harry's fair but I do think it's uh I do think it's a little wild that at this point Harry hasn't come up with anything like nothing like no we are two days away you already have been learning is it tomorrow (laughs) I think it's tomorrow at this point because it's Monday I think the task is on Tuesday but he, he's already been learning summoning charms in class. Why don't maybe you just write just... down a list of every charm you've ever learned and are like, what What can I do with this? I guess maybe he's like, well, I'm not allowed to have my broom, but like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just, he's like, well, I can't, I can't do that. So basically Moody he can't leads. See, he can't see the forest for the trees. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, Moody basically leads him to, like, well, what are you good at? There's a simple spell you can do. Put them together, laddie. Yeah. Uh, And then Harry's like, (gasps) and then who does he run to? Who do you think? Hermione, Hermione, I need you to help me. She's like, what do you think I've been doing? What do you think I've been trying to do, you dick? To wait. Also, he just runs into Herbology like super late because, as we know, it takes like 15 minutes minimum to get anywhere on campus. So yeah, he definitely right. has to be like 30 <laughs> minutes late. So yeah. And she's just like, oh, sorry. If I was Pomona, I would be like, <laughs> excuse <Pomodoro>. me. Pompadora. <laughs> Pompadora. <laughs> excuse me, Pompadora. <laughs> Can you imagine? She's just like. And also she's already, he already said she's been like a little bit colder to him. And I would just, mm-hmm. I can imagine her like in her mind was like, don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Don't do it. Don't say anything. Like it's just her being like, I'm not going to lose do, it. Do you still lose points from Gryffindor? Like do the magical points go away? Yeah. Even if you say it like under your breath, even if you're like five points from Gryffindor. Yeah. A hundred points from Gryffindor. <clears throat> <clears throat> Tickle in my throat. Sorry. So he's like, Hermione, I need you to help me. Can I ask a question that I already have about the second task? Okay. 
now? They are only al- <laughs> yes. They are only allowed to bring. With the rule is they are only allowed to bring their their wand. Correct. That was the rule given. The first task or the second task? Oh, is there a separate set of rules? I assume that was like the rule for the Triwizard Tournament. Is like I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. What? The way it it seemed to me when it was like, when they say it the first time was this is like the rule for each task is you can only bring your wand. Mm. That's how it read to me. I mean, that sounds right. Uh, I mean, he technically, (laughs) Nail's still going strong. He technically eats the gillyweed before, but maybe, I don't know. I don't Mm. know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I also uh, don't like. Can I? I have one more thing to say. I don't like that the first <laughs> task has no hint. No, not at all. This is the insane. second and the second and third do right. Tell them. Yeah, there's a clue. I yeah. don't know about the third one. I don't know about the third one either. Actually, now that I say it, <laughs> I don't know what the clue. Maybe would be. though, because doesn't Harry plan like Hedge the, the compass? <laughs> the compass spell. I think he oh. he figures that out ahead of time. Something like but, that, yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. For this one, I, that's what I said last week that I was like, the compass spell. Yeah, that's that was, was that was the wand turning. Yeah, yeah. My, oh, I okay, okay. Do it. I thought you were like summoning. I was like, no. The, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Abel, Abel. <laughs> um, uh, what was I just going to say? Oh, la- last chapter, that's what I was saying. That I was like, you could have told all four of them that they were going to face a dragon and they all still would have like shit themselves. It's a dragon. Yeah, they're not going to have real world experience of being like, yes! let me practice ahead of time. <laughs> what? This is so stupid. Oh yeah. my gosh. Um. Yeah. So basically they're trying to practice. He's not doing very well. He like doesn't even want to go to divination, but Hermione's like, well, I'm not skipping arithmancy, which like, yes, good on you, Hermione. Like Harry. No, stop. this one, I'm not on Hermione's side. Hermione, skip <laughs> arithmancy. You're fine. Calm down. Your friend no, could die from a, a dragon tomorrow. <laughs> she's setting a boundary. Good for her. She was like, no, I'm not giving up something of my day. Good for her. No. You set that boundary, Hermione. No, take one. Uh, take one for the team, Hermione. <laughs> so Sybil is just predicting that people born in July are in great danger of certain violent deaths. When sudden is sudden violent born? deaths. Sorry, sudden violent deaths. Let's go back to my theory that everything comes true. When was what's Cedric's birthday? Yeah, when is it? I mean, Neville is also born in July. And nothing happens to him. I'm just gonna, you know throw that out there um to which harry is like well as long as it's not drawn out then i don't want to suffer and i thought that was a good one that was a good no, one who's born in september october <laughs> oh okay uh oh my god yeah. so is michael's born in october michael literally is cedric degree i told him i told him libra uh, yeah libra uh to which ron Catches Harry's eye after Harry makes the joke about, well, I, I don't want to suffer. <laughs> yeah, just like that. <laughs> just like that. Um, it's very heart stopper. What is the show? Heartbreaker? Heart stopper. Girl, Netflix I don't one, know. The gay I don't one? Know either of those. Heartbreaker, heart, heart stopper? I don't know. Cleesey, can you, Cleesey, just stop. Cleesey. Not right now. Just like licking to the high Run heavens. Run cam. So loud. We're on cam, <laughs> and it's not that kind of she's cam. Like, okay. Hi. <laughs> she looks so cute right now. <laughs> um. <clears throat> oh. Boom, boom, boom. What was that? <laughs> it was like a drum sound. It's the it's the like springs on my. Oh oh I see. Holder yeah. Ah yes. Uh so. After Harry makes that joke, Ron catches his eye and like looks like he's gonna laugh, but Harry's just too pissed off. So had Harry not been in a shit mood, Ron and him probably would have made up by now. There's been two times now where Ron is like, seemed like he might want to. Right. He's tired of talking to Seamus and Dean and Neville. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. He's like, actually, I miss because my, my he, BFF. Because none of them like the Chudley Cannons. They think the Chudley Cannons are bad. <laughs> the and only he's like, reason. Well, Harry doesn't know. <laughs> Harry's doesn't a mug. Well, mean, Dean wouldn't know. Mean, Dean just talks about football too much. As yeah, in like true. soccer, English football. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I'm just saying. Ron would have made up with you, Harry, by now. Uh, <clears throat> so they later, uh, Harry and Hermione go out and they sneak under the unv- the invisibility cloak. Why couldn't they have just practiced in the common room? I was kind of like, why did they have to go out? Just for privacy, maybe? I don't, but why? Everyone in the in the common room probably would have helped him. They're all like super thrilled that he's a champion. Well, and it's also like, you you don't even need to tell people it's for the thing. You could be like, I need to learn the summoning I'm charm liter- because it's, I'm learning summoning I'm charms learning in, in cl- charms. Great point. Thank you, Adam. Great point. Great because point. Again, yeah. Year four is when we're going to learn summoning <laughs> yeah, charms. Years. Been in school for four years at this point. Um, Once again, Hermione is just the best friend anyone could have. She's like sneaking out in the dead of night to help you learn this charm that like you should have been trying to learn anyway because it's a part of your course for that semester. Right. And then Peeves shows up and starts just throwing things at Harry. (laughs) I don't understand how how a fucking brat that figured out how to do a goddamn Expecto Patronum. I know. Are you kidding me? Fuck off. This is just, I mean, yeah, great point. This is a summoning so you're good, spell. He's good at magic only when it's convenient to him is when he's good <laughs> at magic. Only when he like crams because that's right. basically what he did. He had private lesson. He needs a private tutor yeah. for any, he needs anything. A tutor. Yeah. That's what Hermione's doing, but is she getting well. paid for it? No, much like the house exactly. elves, she's not getting paid for her work. <sighs> exactly. Uh, so they leave after Peeves starts throwing things. This is why, this is why Hermione is standing up for house self rights because she understands what it means <laughs> to be taken advantage of. <laughs> yes, you're right. She, she really empathizes with them. Uh, they go back to the dormitory and then continue practicing there because it's empty, which like, once again, I was like, Okay could have just been there the whole time um and then before he goes to bed he's like finally gotten the hang of it um but he still is kind of worried because the firebolt will be much farther away so he's like well hopefully it works i don't know we'll have to see so the next day the lessons for everyone are going to finish midday so that they can all go and they can watch the first task hermione's Um, pissed (laughs) yeah (laughs) live it right like "Ah, what what is this? For what? Um, and you know what? she would not be going to like the events if Harry was not in it. I don't know. I think because it's that big. Like she went to the Quidditch World Cup. I don't know that, but she didn't know about house. Uh, honey, she's still doing research on house self liberation. Honey, she's doing. I don't know. Lawyer I research. The fact that she has gone to every Quidditch, Quidditch game. game. And that yeah. she, I feel, and went to the Quidditch World Cup. I'm like, I think she likes to go to the events. You know, she likes to be in the in the thick of it. Um, so Harry feels into like super <laughs> into the thick of it. Ugh. <laughs> Harry feels really nervous all day, which like sure. Um, and then the whole morning flies by, like before he knows it, Minerva. Mm-hmm. I never have referred to all of the teachers by their first names until we started doing this podcast. And now, like, with the exception of maybe Dumbledore, Snape. I always, oh, Snape, yeah. I always say, like, Minerva, Pomona, right. Right. Phileas, Flitwick, yeah. I guess. I couldn't remember his, his first name a while back. Sybil. So I don't always say. Sybil. We always say their first names. Um, Except Poppy. just not the villain teachers, like Snape and Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> and Dumbledore. <laughs> Dumbledore. Even Maxime and Karkaroff. Oh, no. Karkaroff's first name is Igor. We don't ever call him Igor. But we say Maxime. What is Max? Oh, yeah, I guess. Oh. Is that her first name or her last name? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> is that her 
first name and last name. Mac. Wait, now I need to look it up. Madame Maxine. Oh, one of our listeners also wrote into me saying it is very normal for students in Europe in general to stand. It's her last name. What's her first name? Olymp. O L Y M P E. Okay, okay. So we haven't, yeah. Olymp. It is normal. It is normal for them to stand when their teachers come in. Specifically the French or just European? European. Hmm. But I'm assuming they were including French students in that. Right, 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 right. Um, before Harry knows it, Minerva's coming to take him down to prep for the first task. And she gives him a little prep pep talk, which I thought was really sweet and you can tell that she's nervous too and i was like yeah she's still pissed her and albus have not yeah. spoken i'm convinced no they haven't they have she's there's a hundred percent she is they have not talked she chewed him out either on the way like she back ripped up him after, a new asshole yeah and then she's went to poppy in the, right who, away like, in the group like when they had that conversation she was like well albus thinks it's fine so it's fine and then immediately as soon as they were gone she was like i will never stick up for you if you pull this shit again. <laughs> i've had about a fucking enough of you <sighs> yeah she's like i will never back you again don't ever come to me for anything and don't then she immediately me. went to pop i won't be there yeah i'm i'm gone uh so harry mcgonagall's like are you okay and he's like, yeah, I'm fine. And then she's like, okay, good luck. So she's like short of breath or like is like, <sighs> she's like stressed. Mm-hmm. So then Harry goes into the tent that has been set up and the other three champions are in there and they're all like showing their, you know, nerves in their own way. Fleur's like pale, Crumb looks extra surly and Cedric is just kind of like pacing and like gives Harry like a very like plaster non smile. Um, and then Ludicrous Bagman says that their task is to retrieve the golden egg. And they're like, okay. Keep in mind, none of them know, are supposed to know. Like, right. none of them are supposed to know. Luckily, and like, they all know. <laughs> luckily, they all know, but I'm just like, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know what I would think in that moment to be like. You have to. You have to get the golden egg, and you like. What if you didn't know any information? I just You'd think be like, like. I just think like. Listen, you're not doing this for any real reason because this doesn't go anywhere. You're doing this for entertainment value, obviously. So like, give the people a show. Tell them ahead of time. Would we let the queens know before they get on Drag Race what their looks <laughs> need to be? They can right. post some shit out. There's a when reason, they have to yeah. make it the week of, it's not good. That's why I'm just trying. I'm like, it's you didn't it's have to hide it from them that it was dragons. Them being it's like, dragons. there's dragons. It's, it's dragons. dragons. Just that. Just say that sentence. And then just what, like they, Harry told Cedric, it's yeah. dragons. <laughs> It's dragons. Um, and then and then in this moment, be like, your task is to get the egg. Like, they're going to know. They're going to be like, okay, shit, I have to figure out how to get the egg. Okay. There's an actual, I like, still, thing I have to do as well. I on top still, of just, like, I'm battling a dragon. At least they didn't I have to s- kill the dragon. Right. Oh, well, we're going to talk about what Crumb did. I don't like it. Well, I mean, I was he like, didn't no. do it. Yeah, but the fact that they were like, you're not supposed to, like hurt the dragon or whatever i was like yeah. it's fine it's not a real animal i get it i just i'm like you're forcing these animals into this situation that they don't want to be in and then you hurt one of them i don't i don't like it. anyway well, and then it killed it killed its offspring yes it stepped on some of the eggs so i was just like yeah. G- guys come on this blood is on your hands albus anyway, yeah dumbledore Albus-y. last Dumbledore-y. name only <laughs> Uh, so Fleur pulls the Welsh green and will be going second. Crumb pulls the Chinese fireball and will be going third. Cedric pulls the Swedish short snout and will be going first. And Harry pulls the Hungarian horntail and will be going fourth. How did you feel about this choice, Adam? That this was um, what she chose to do is the, is the author. I think it makes sense that Harry goes last. And I think it makes sense that Cedric goes first. Uh huh. I agree with that. Do you mean 
Do you mean the dragon choices themselves? I guess yeah, I don't know I what your question is. <laughs> I guess maybe I... Okay, yeah, no. Let me start with what I have a problem with. The fact that okay. he's going last and facing the horn tail, it was just like a little too much for me. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, was like, why not have one, like, one of the other champions face the... I don't know. Maybe she yeah. just, because there was such a buildup about it, she was like, well, we'll yeah. get time with the Hungarian right. horn tail. But there is a part I of me that was- I don't think anyone would have been like, well, they were, well, one wasn't as bad as the, like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. None of us know what dragons are. So when she said right, that, right. we been like, great, they're all scary. They're all fucking dragons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Know. Yeah, I don't know. I just was like, mm. Is there Hungarian dragon lore? Let me look this up real quick. I don't know. I feel like it's just for the name. Uh, a a Sarkany, or dragon, is a legendary monster found in Hungarian mythology. It usually appears as a scaly, winged reptilian beast, but in some cases, it could be a mixture of other beings. Oh my god, this is so scary! I'm sending this to you in, in our okay. in our little chat okay to Ari this is an artist's uh, interpretation it's probably something an etching on wood is my guess whoa yeah yeah it does have like nine heads what is that supposed is that supposed to be God and an angel sure it's definitely God yeah yeah what is the thing maybe this probably is the Mary. thing battling them yeah yeah, oh, wow. it's wild. Spooky. Well, good thing Harry didn't have to fight something that had that many heads. So, yeah, I don't know. I was just like, mm, him being fourth, fine. I don't know about the Hungarian horn tail. Maybe I'm just curious about the other dragons. I always kind of wondered what the other dragons were like, to be honest. I, I wish love, I, I wish they had gotten to watch. Like, I know she was just like, I don't want to write how they I all know. do their thing. I get that, I but know. I do want to. I it's weird that they. I think in the next chapter they kind of say like, or no, in this chapter they say like what yeah, each of they them break kind it down of did a little bit. Yeah, but it kind of would have been cool to describe it in real time. Yeah, yeah, because this is probably one of my favorite moments that she's ever written when he battles the dragon. Yeah, I was like hanging on every word. It was it's definitely epic. well. Yeah, it's well written. Yeah. Adam said begrudgingly. Fine. <laughs> fine. Um So Ludo is interested in if Harry has a plan and he kind of like tries to Ludo. pull him aside and like Ludo. <laughs> Ludo Chris. <laughs> Ludo Chris is interested in if Harry has a plan. And he's just like, well, I'll right. he's like, I'll help you out. Like no one would no one has to know. And like it would be fair because you're the underdog. So like it's it's fine. And Harry's yeah. like, no. And he's like, oh shit, that was kind of rude. And he's like, no, no, I it, it's I got it. I, I got it. And I was like, oh god, it's so awkward. <laughs> I was like, literally, yikes. this is where Harry and I are different people because I'd have been like, sure, what do you what is your idea? Well, what are you thinking? If your yeah, idea I is probably, better yeah. than my idea, a hundred percent I will go with your idea. I probably would have been, yeah, I would have been like, uh, I have a plan, but what were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Um, this isn't real. None of this is real. It doesn't matter. This is a fake game at a school. <laughs> Literally. This boy shouldn't even be. This little boy, this little mute boy should not even First be competing. All, it should have been like your dragons have been decided. Everybody's getting their dragon and Harry gets a stuffed dragon uh, that we purchased <laughs> from a carnival. Harry gets so, baby Norbert. Yeah. <laughs> Baby so, Norbert's good back. Luck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Harry has to sit in the tent and listen to each champion go before him. And I would just like to say, as a person with anxiety, this is my worst nightmare. I would literally be like, when I came out of that tent, like I would be like, oh, here we go. Like holding my wand, like... <laughs> That has to be this the is, most nerve wracking. You don't know what, because you can't see it. So anything you're right. hearing just sounds five times more terrible Horrible. than it actually is. All three of the champions are able to secure the egg. So it's finally Harry's turn. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's like half present. 
So he's just like kind of in a daze. He's like partially dissociate dissociating, really, is what's happening. Like hundred percent. This is a trauma experience. Yes, it is. Trauma. Trauma. Um, So Harry gets out there and the way she described it, I was like, I know exactly what she means by this. (laughs) Unfortunately, when you are like partially dissociating, you almost like, I know what she means by like the muffledness. Like you genuinely can't really hear. Yeah. Like you'll look like if someone was recording what was happening, you would watch the clip back later and be like, I don't remember any of that. Like, I don't remember yeah. any of this. Yeah. Um, so he summons his firebolt and it works. Quickly. And then he just focuses so hard on like what he has to do. What like, do we think? If it broke a window, it flew out. How do it? How did it get there? <laughs> Where was it? Yeah. Did he like rest it outside the castle and then like went? <laughs> I don't know. I don't under. Uh, I don't even understand why you couldn't have brought it to the tent and then been like, well, I won't come out with it. Adam, remember, it's in that broom shed that like is just unlocked all the time. (laughs) Right. So it didn't 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 have to break through anything. It knocked on the door (laughs) and the door just opened. Yeah. Yes. Um, But now that door to the broom shed is just like a jar. Because the right. broom flew out, so everyone well, else's brooms I mean, are exposed. Al- everybody knows Halohamora, so anybody could get in, even if it was locked. <laughs> right, right. It's not. It's not locked anyway. <laughs> right, because nothing's <laughs> locked in the wizarding world, as we've learned. <laughs> Sorry, I have like I need some Stand water. Back, like, please. So Harry focuses so hard that he, like all of the the noise any noise is drowned out supposedly but then we get like one line of ludo bagman complimenting him and i was like girl if you're gonna stick with it if you're gonna say something like that you have to stick with it he can't hear them okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) um so he gets on his broom and as soon as he's like up in the air flying around he just kind of lets go of all the fear that he was feeling and he just focuses on the egg that he needs to retrieve like right. a snitch it's like a golden ball Gold, sphere like thing ball, yeah this part from this part on was so great like i ha- there was like a part where i was listening to him narrate it and i just had chills and like the dragon's breathing fire at him and then like th- mm-hmm. this is this is where ludo makes the comp- uh, makes the comment that harry flies really well um, and he's like, oh, keep an eye on him, crumb. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Ludo, shut up. Uh, so the second time that Harry dives down, one of the horntailed spikes grazes his shoulder. Uh, and then he notices that the dragon is really trying to stay on top of the nest to protect the eggs. So he's like, okay, I'm going to have to figure out how to lure her away from the nest. So he's kind of like, bobbing and weaving and doing all that and she's like very tempted to go after him but she still is like oh no i should protect the eggs but then finally she gives in and she like fully stretches out to try and get him and then right at that moment he dives and he snatches the golden egg right out of the nest and this moment like I am not a sports person, obviously, and I'm not athletic, so I have no idea what this feels like. But I can only imagine if you were Harry in that moment and you got the egg and you're like flying around. You just snatched yeah. the egg out of a dragon's nest and you're flying around. And yeah. she describes it as then like someone turned the volume back up and so he can hear everyone cheering for him. And I was like, I cannot imagine. That was written so well. It was just like so epic. Yeah. Um, so different in the film couldn't be yeah, more different. very different yeah i understand like this is the real battle of hogwarts honey because hogwarts yeah. gets destroyed in this sequence i just i well i guess we'll save that for the movie that'll be like a mm-hmm. whole thing because i was like i don't i just i don't know if we needed all of that i'm gonna go out on a limb and say we didn't there's what i'm gonna say and she said it uh, hot take. And it's been sad. <laughs> uh, so Harry is just relieved that he has survived the first task. And Imagine Hagrid... being Harry, but imagine being a person in the audience watching it. Like, there are <laughs> yeah. literal you human stakes. Yeah. There are stakes. 
This yeah. isn't a football game where you're like, the stake is they win or they lose. My team wins or my team loses. This is, this boy could die. Cedric's this mi- face. Sorry, this child, burned. this minor could die. <laughs> Cedric's face got burned. He has like the gauze right. stuff on his face. Yeah. And that's weird. It's weird because then like he becomes Harvey Dent. And he becomes Two Face. It's you. very weird You're that so then she like starts writing Batman after this. <laughs> Dumb. Uh, so Hagrid, Minerva, and Moody are all like rushing to greet him, and then Hagrid's dumbass is like, "Yeah, and Charlie said that one, the Horntail was the worst one. You remember?" <laughs> and I was like, "Just uh, classic Hagrid." Um. That was hilarious. Um, so then Harry goes to the first aid tent where Hoppy is helping Cedric with whatever his injury is. Because at this point, I didn't know what happened to him. And then I said, give this woman a raise. She has to be paid more. <laughs> this woman. Can you imagine when she found out the try was she was like. Mm-mm. We're going to be doing no. what? What was that? How about we do a triathlon? How about that? Build some, uh, you know, mm-hmm. physical strength in these children. <laughs> no? Okay. The clip Great. of Annalise Keating just, like, packing up and, like, leaving the office. <laughs> that's that's what Poppy did. Yeah. <laughs> she was just like, uh, <clears throat> I'll just go. <laughs> oh, it was so good. Uh, poor Poppy. I'm so sorry, Poppy. We appreciate you. <clears throat> Um, So she's like, well, and then she, you know, goes off on her little rant and she's like, dragons, last year, last year, this year, dragons. dragons. And I'm like, you're right. You are right. Poppy. You are right. And then she's like, you need to sit, sit. I said, sit that ass down. And then she goes (laughs) to help Cedric. And right at that moment, Hermione you need to sit and Ron sit that ass down. You need to sit that pretty little ass down. <laughs> <sighs> I feel like Poppy is a definitely a black woman. I know she wasn't in the film, but like she's giving uh, me big like auntie energy, just like she, not just, having it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, underpaid and overworked. Well, now I don't want her to be a black woman because I don't want that to happen to a black woman. <laughs> Never mind. She's white. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she give, <sighs> she's giving me that. She's giving me auntie energy in this moment. Um, the So then Hermione and Ron come into the tent and Hermione has like na- finger prints in her face i've never done that but i've definitely have you ever like held your hands so tightly together that when you open your hand you see the yes this is how long nails right now this is how miranda rides um tower of terror (laughs) she she grips so tightly (laughs) so that that afterwards she's like she has to pry her hands off of the bars and then she can't like unloosen them for like 15 minutes oh my They're gosh like, miranda <laughs> yeah this she doesn't really write it ever she'll yeah i was like don't like just don't go on that movie. one <laughs> uh so she has the fingernail imprints on her face uh and then ron and harry have their little makeup moment so at first ron mm-hmm. ron starts and he's like you would i can't remember exactly what he says but he's like you would you would have been mad to like volunteer for that to do mm-hmm. that and harry's like oh like kind of gives like a snarky remark back at first he's like mm. mm-hmm. and then ron like inhales to apologize like he's like and harry's like it's okay forget it and then ron's like no i should like goes to be like no i should like i should t-. and harry's like no no it's fine it's fine it's fine and then they both kind of like grin at each other. And then Hermione's literally like, ah! Ah! And I was like, this poor girl has been so stressed out for weeks. Like, and then she's like, you're so stupid. And I said, yeah. I am Hermione. We are Hermione. This is the <laughs> best agree. line 
written in this book series. You're both so stupid. Stupid. (laughs) You are right, Hermione. I agree. And then I'll tattoo that. That's what I'll get tattooed on me. (laughs) You're both so stupid. (laughs) (sighs) So then she rushes out, and then Harry and Ron, you know, kind of follow her as Ron starts telling Harry how everyone else did. So Cedric transformed a rock into a dog. Um, and that worked at first, but then the dragon was like, actually, I don't want the dog. I want the mm, tall, handsome human man. So is it a Ooh. real dog or is it because it's a transfigured dog? Is it not real? Do you know what I'm right. asking? Did, did they all watch like, a dog like burn alive? Right. If it starts to die, does it too. then turn turn back into a rock? I'm assuming that, yeah, once it may, maybe once the dragon actually tried to interact with it it just like turned into a rock again because it was just like uh like a A mirage mirage. yeah uh and so then after it was like well i'm actually gonna go for the 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 man uh cedric got burned which i'm like did he get did he get the egg but got burned you know what i mean because i'm like well he still got the egg so it must have happened like right at the end when he was going yeah. to grab it that the dragon turned around and was like, Bleh. I don't know. And then it had Fleur, to be because there's no way it could have happened before because the whole thing was like they have people on standby just in case yeah, anything right. happens. Right. So you'd basically like be disqualified if you got too yeah. injured. Yeah. Is what my understanding was kind yeah. of. I mean, it's not explicitly <laughs> said that way, but I feel like that's implied. If people have to step right. in, I don't I feel like. You're yeah, yeah, you're disqualified. On. Right, exactly. Well, that's like with the maze. Fleur right. and Crumb get disqualified. So yeah. Um Fleur put a charm on the dragon to like lull it to sleep. But then the dragon right. snored and her skirt got caught on fire. <laughs> her skirt. Why was she wearing a skirt? I'm so- Why I was she wearing a skirt? I'm sorry. Fleur Delacour is so smart there's no way she's not she is like she's got to be like valedictorian uh, at bow battens right. i'm convinced there's no way she's wearing a skirt sorry why would you wear a skirt no why one would you would. wear a skirt why would anyone wear a skirt so that pissed me off and i was like she did the best out of everyone technically yeah the dragon was asleep fire. and she just snuck in yeah. It didn't say the dragon woke up when it like snored or anything. I wish like, we knew what all their marks actually were, like what their scores were. Yeah. And she put her uh she put the fire on her skirt out with water, like instantly. So I would be I like, well, she, Yes. I was like, well, look at her. She didn't need help from anyone. Right. So that pissed well, me off. I mean, she was Still told ahead of time, so she did need some help. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but they all were. They all, yeah, they yeah. all were told yeah, yeah. ahead of time. So I was just like, whatever. She like that shows to me that she was like quick on her feet. You know, it was like, oh shit, my robes are on fire. Let me, my skirt right. is on fire. Let me put it out. Um, and then Crum hit the dragon with a spell, and then it was like running around in pain, and then like smashed its eggs. And I don't like this. I, I'm not going to go into it. I don't like that as a choice. Do you think they yeah. made it like Crumb was the only one that did like a violent spell and that's because he's been taught by Karkaroff? That was the only thing I could think of. No. I was like, I, I just could have done I, without this. I wish it was that nuance. No, I don't think so. I think it was just I like, was just, boy, boy does manly spell. Girl does feminine <laughs> spell. <laughs> yeah. Because women are tricksters, uh, much like the bisexual community. <laughs> us tricky bisexuals. You never know. You never know what we're going to do. Um, so, yeah, I don't like that. I just don't like the idea of, like, especially just the fact that, like, okay, Charlie Weasley, for example. What I know about Charlie, I don't know. I just don't... I, I don't know. It's just weird thinking like you're bringing these four creatures into something and then you would like be okay with one of them getting hurt. I don't know. I just don't like it. I don't Well, it's like very it. like Roman gladiator yeah. energy. 
Yes. Yes. Or the running of the dragons. Yeah. I'm like the dragons, the dragons don't want to be there. They don't want to be there anyway. Leave them alone. What uh, what was do we find out what the spell was that Sirius would have told him to use? Do we find out later? Doesn't he say Akio? He was like he says like yeah, I would have told you to do a summoning charm. I think that's what he said. That's weird to me because why would anyone think of that? Do you know what I mean? I don't think that's like a normal way. I feel like all the things what that they mean? do why would you choose a summoning a summon- charm? To Why would he, the, just because like, that's what he's good at? <laughs> the only thing Harry's good at. It's wild to me that this boy is like so important in the in the wizarding community, and he's only good at like sport. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But think about how much. I mean, America is a country values athletes. Which sure, fine, but like stupid. I know. I agree. He's not. You're talking. It's not theater st- kids. You know, it's you're talking, seven, you're reaching the choir it's here. It's seven books of sports camp. It's seven books of schooling. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's annoying. Um, so the sc- Harry comes out and then m- he gets, he's getting his scores. Uh, Maxime gives him an eight. Crouch gives him a nine. Dumbledore gives him a nine as well. Ludo gives him a 10. Which Harry was like, what? And then Karkaroff. <laughs> Karkaroff gives him a four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, wait, hold on. So this is allowed base. I mean, I guess, because who's going to tell him, you know, like, he's just this being like, shady. This is the, this is the Russian or the Winter Olympics from like 2002 or 2006, where like in the, in the couple's, uh, couples um figure skating uh-huh. the like russian judge gave the canadian couple who like got tens from everybody else like a like a five and they were like like everyone lost their minds it's like this yeah. is just because they wanted russia to win yeah it was bad yeah it was real bad oh come on i mean it's just so transparent don't be that guy Ugh. yeah so of course um, and then Harry is tied with Crumb, which is what the 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 fact that Karkaroff like took a moment to think. I think that they, he was like, "Well, what score can I give him?" So they're tied, and that was why he did a four. But I was like, "Okay." Anyways, why didn't I feel like Fleur why wouldn't still he do should a, have gotten? Why wouldn't he do like a one then? But Just why did Crumb needed to be? A- <laughs> Why did Crumb do better than Fleur? Fleur should have Fleur should also, be tied with Harry. When he's listening to it, it also seems like hers might have been one of the quickest. Because yeah. there's only 10 minutes pass. This is what I'm saying. She should have been tied with him. Cedric got hurt right. and or got burned. And then Crumb, the dragon, like ran all over the place and smashed some of the eggs. So he should have gotten points off for that. Fleur's robes caught on fire for like a second, but she put it out herself. Cedric had to go get treated. Harry had to go get treated. Right. And then, you know, Fleur went to go smoke with Madame Maxime. (laughs) This just in, y'all. Fleur was robbed. Team Fleur. It's so, so dumb. Harry doesn't. It is really dumb. It doesn't make sense. I read that and I was like, wait a minute. She should have won. She did, did she better put, than all of them. Does she officially say the rank of how their scores ended up? I just no. know. I know she says she knows. Maybe, she doesn't, right? maybe in the in the next chapter. I don't know. OK. Ugh, maybe it's just so maybe annoying. when they go in the water. She's the only one that I mean, her they go skirt in, caught in on order. fire, but. Oh, yeah, they do go in order, don't they? Yeah, you're right. I think so, yeah. Yeah, and I bet you anything she'll be last. And why? She shouldn't be. This is so stupid. Anyway, so (laughs) Harry doesn't really even care about the score. He's just happy that Ron is, like, so on his side and is, like, pissed off that Karkaroff gave him a four. Um, uh, And then there's this nice moment where he's, like, it wasn't only Ron that was supporting him, though. Like, even though he hadn't felt very supported, 
in the past week or couple weeks when push came to shove when he was facing the dragon like everyone was on his side and like wanted him to do well which I think is a very mature way of looking at it I don't know if I, I might be like oh now you're all on my okay you know I feel like I would be a little more pissed you know what I mean like, y'all, yeah. you guys were all so mean to me for weeks yeah I would <laughs> believe you'd be a little more immature about it I believe that yeah yeah <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would be like, excuse me? Not with Ron, of course, but with like other people. I'd be like, oh, now you're all excited because I did well. Ugh. Annoying. Um, so Harry and They wouldn't Crumb be as tied. impressed if they knew that Moody had to be like, so what are <laughs> yes. you good at? Yeah. And how and would Hermi- you get that to you? The fact that Hermione tutored him for hours. Right. Um. Harry and Crumb are tied for first place. Uh, They run into Charlie or Charlie like rushes by them and says that Harry needs to go back into the champion's champion's tent for a quick sec. Um, And then when Harry comes into the tent, him and Cedric have a nice little moment where they're like, hey, good one. And he's like, yeah, you too. And I was like, oh, this is cute. I like this. It was cute. Little exchange between them that they're like buddies now. Um, Mm -hmm. And then Ludo... Ludo, Ludacris tells them that they need to solve the clue. <laughs> Mr. The Crouch egg. has not talked in this chapter. He's literally Adam. He is somewhere just like. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm convinced. I don't think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nine. What if he gave them all nines? All four of them got nines. <laughs> I really like the <laughs> imperious crouch face that you make. <laughs> Just deer in the headlights. <laughs> oh, so good. Barty, are you okay? Um, are you all right, Bartimius? Uh... Ludo explains that they need to solve the clue within the egg, which apparently opens. There's like hinges. Sure. Uh, Hinges? So it's literally just like, like that's, that's what it's, that's how this egg is described. Mm -hmm. Is there a photo? Oh, no. I don't have a How photo of the egg in my... Oh, I haven't looked in the next... There, there might be a photo of the egg when he actually deals with it later. Yeah, I think there is. The unexpected task? Oh, no. That's something else. No, that's asking Cho to the dance. The egg in the key. Yeah, it literally is like... Just like if you cut an actual egg in half. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Where in the film, it like... You like twist it at the top and it like pops open. I like the I like the film idea better. Probably the only time you'll hear me say that about the fourth <laughs> film. <laughs> Pros, um, the egg, cons, it, everything else. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it so funny? Like we uh, we all came into this uh podcast thinking that like it was gonna be the third movie that I shit on, and now it's the fourth movie that we're both shitting on. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, as they head back up to the castle, Rita literally like jumps out of the bushes at Harry. Like I'm not, ex- <laughs> that's like how it, that's like how it was written. <laughs> it's just like, oh, how did it go? How do you want to give me a little? A- Hello, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Harry. Hello, Harry, dear. Can we grab a quick word from you, darling? Uh, darling. <laughs> darling, please, just give us a moment. Why am I Tim Curry all of a sudden? <laughs> That's Tim Curry. darling. <laughs> uh, yeah, or Cruella. Uh, and Harry's like, yeah, you can have a word. Goodbye. Harry, technically that was that was two words, but we'll give I'll, I'll give it to you. Although is goodbye one word? I guess goodbye is one word, isn't it? When you actually say goodbye, there isn't a space. Is there? No, it's so, one word. Yeah. So I take that back. Good job, Harry. Good job. Good Check job, which is two words. Good and job. 
<laughs> so I will leave you with two words. Good job. And that's Good it. Job, that's Harry. the chapter. That's it. Great. Ask. How are they how how did they change out the dragons between each champion? I don't know. They had to like stun them all over again. But the way that like it's written makes the... it seem like they were like, and that's the point yeah, to miss right. whatever. All right, come on out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like instant. Yeah. Yeah, what the heck? Unless there were four stages? Unless they built four arenas? I don't know how you'd do that. Would they? Yeah, no. We don't have an... There's... She should have given more information about that. How would they have traded? Yeah, no. What? I just was like, A, dragons are so big, they're not going to do whatever you want to do. And no, they're so protective of their eggs that it's like, unless you move the egg, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's a huge issue. It was weird. They don't talk about that about at it. all. No. We have questions. We have questions that will never be answered. <laughs> never. <laughs> uh, well, that wraps up this chapter. Next week, we'll be reading chapter one called The House Elf Liberation Front. You can find the Can't podcast Can't wait. On the you know, we're so thrilled about that chapter, listeners. You can find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you find podcasts, as well as video versions on the Ampliverse YouTube channel, you also, we've re-uploaded all of book four as the video versions on Spotify. Oh, So exciting. every chapter for book four on Spotify is the video version. Um, if you have the app, it's I think it's a little bit easier to find than doing it like on your desktop. But Wonderful. As always, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe so that we can get a perfect Newt score. Five stars only, or else uh, you will have to battle a fucking dragon. I don't know. Yeah, that's the worst thing that happens in this. You will yeah. also have to steal a golden dragon from a freshly a, 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 a golden a, dragon, <laughs> a golden and a golden egg from a dragon suffering postpartum after giving birth to a, a bunch of eggs. So Thick for real, this is so fucked, <laughs> <laughs> y'all. Animal abuse. Uh huh. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at HB Anxious, Instagram at HB Anxious, and YouTube at The Ampliverse. We are hosted on Anchor and recorded on Zencasters. So thank you to the both of them. And we are a proud member of The Ampliverse. Check them out at TheAmpliverse.com. Thank you, Ariana. You're so welcome. And as always, Accio Firebolt. I was going to say, I was going to say, Accio Firebolt.